Hey everyone, uh, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, on Pinterest, on Instagram, Twitter, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Sorry I'm a couple minutes late. Uh, this is the night of technical difficulties. So <laughs> um, <clears throat> I've uh, started just a few minutes late. I hope that's okay. But my plan for tonight, I'm going to be sharing about my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons for the week. Um, I'm going to do a deep dive into kindergarten and share just a few of the things that go um, with this lesson and connect to the previous lesson and move into the next lesson. So it's a, um, this lesson and also um, a little bit of before and a little bit of after so you can sort of see the idea of the scope of where things are going. Um, and I'm also going to be sharing a little bit about a bulletin board that I use in my classroom. Um, a few weeks ago I did um, a presentation at the Georgia Music Educators Association, which is my state conference, um, and I shared a bit about advocacy and how you can you can use bulletin boards for advocacy for your program, for music, um, and um, a lot of folks were like, that's really cool and I love seeing examples. So I just wanted to share just a few examples of that, um, of, of different bulletin boards. So last week I shared one, this week I'm going to share a new one, next week I'll share something different, just so you can see some ideas of different things and how you might use them and how you can use that to your advantage. So uh, kindergarten through fifth grade lessons, a dive into kindergarten, and a little bit about a bulletin board. Um, if you have questions along the way, please leave questions or comments in the comment section below. Um, I always love when, when I can see that folks are, are asking things and other folks sometimes answer that. It's great to see that conversation happening. Um, if you have questions about any of the resources I'm talking about, um, on Instagram, you can go to my LinkedIn profile. If you want to click, there's a page that says uh, Musical Mondays Recaps where you can get all those links. On Facebook, it's at the bottom of the caption for this video. There's a link to the links page um, and you can get um, links to all those things I talk about today. Uh, and <clears throat> one more thing, if you want to join the Every Moment Matters Music Education Facebook group, it's a place where we can carry on the conversations throughout the week and throughout the month um, so you can get more help from people. <clears throat> so if you ever feel like, I've got a question. I think it's like a dumb question, but I, I really want to ask and I want to learn more. That's a great place you can ask those questions. There's no dumb questions. I ask those questions all the time. So it's good to get feedback from people you know you can trust and who you know will be kind in their responses. So um, join that group if you want. That's Every Moment Matters uh, Music Education Community on Facebook. And two more things. <clears throat> if you are in South Carolina this weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'm presenting two sessions on Saturday at the South Carolina Music Educators Association Conference. I'm so excited. Um, I'm going to be doing uh, two sessions on Saturday right after lunch, basically. Um, and the first one is about dancing. So don't eat a real hearty lunch because <laughs> you will be maybe not folk dancing, maybe just like folk rolling on the floor if you eat um, too much. Um, but uh, the first session is at 12. That's a dance and movement session. And then there's another one at 115. So um, if and then that's about general lesson ideas, instruments, all sorts of stuff. So I hope that if you're in South Carolina, you're going to be coming to SCMEA this weekend. And I hope I get to see you there. And one more thing. One of the reasons I was a little bit late getting started today was I was posting an image because there's um, a Teachers Pay Teachers sale starting uh, tomorrow and running Tuesday, Wednesday. And um, I'm giving away a gift card along with a bunch of other really great music teachers. So if you go on there, you can follow the directions and get entered to win a gift card or uh, from me and from a couple other music sellers too. So um, check that out. It's a great way to get resources um, at a, a discount. TPD, TPD doesn't do many sales throughout the year. Um, and so it's a great time to do that, but also you can win a gift card. So check out my page after the video is over and enter to win a gift card. Okay, so let me jump in. Like I said, I'm going to do my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons. I'm going to do a deep dive on kindergarten, but I wanted to talk about a bulletin board first. Because like I said, at Georgia Music Educators, I did a session about advocacy and I did a session about, um, you know, just informing your community. And one of the things I talked about was bulletin boards and how you can use those to your advantage. And I think a lot of folks <clears throat> think of bulletin boards sort of as a chore. And they can be, but I also think that they're just a great source for um, advocacy for our program, for what we do, for music in general. And I think the reason is, you know, like even if you've had a really tough, hard day and you're just wiped out and you want to go home, um, one of the great things about a bulletin board is even when you have nothing else to give, the bulletin board is there to advocate even when you're not physically in the building, even when you don't have like... Uh, you know, like the bulletin board 
it's just there, you know? So what you can do, you can fill it up with advocacy things. You can fill it up with information about music. You can fill it up with things that excite people about music. So last week I shared um, about um, this set I had called Best of the Best, and it has uh, profiles of 25 um, great African-American uh, musicians and uh, goes into detail about each one. This week I wanted to share one that you might consider using well, now or March or whenever, but it would be really great for April. April is um, Jazz History Month, and this one is called Legends of Jazz. So what you get in the set um, is there's a page, and these are like hot off the presses. I have not even laminated them yet, so like I'm just like touching them like very gently because I need to go laminate them. Um, but it, it has a little bit of a background. So it says um, jazz is the quintessential American musical genre. Jazz origin originated in New Orleans around 1900 and is characterized by improvisation, distinctive tone colors, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, this basically is like a, a um, like a title sentence, like a like a topic sentence that, that gives anybody who's coming past the bulletin board more information. Um, this I, I don't really use this for kids. They don't care. But adults and administrators and parents, they do like to see this, sort of like help summarize everything that they're seeing. Because honestly, bulletin boards aren't just for kids, they're for the administration, for the parents too. And so this is one that just sort of gives them a little bit of an overview. Another thing that I don't have printed out right now, I'm gonna print out at school, um, I have like a bulletin board, like a header in these letters, the, this font, so that you can just print it out and put it up. Um, I need to print that out and laminate that, just so you have sort of a header that sort of matches the other things in the set. So then there are a bunch of profiles of different musicians. So like this one about Bessie Smith, it's got her picture, it's got her birth and death dates. Um, then a quick tiny little thing that says Bessie Smith was the most popular female blues singer of the 1920s and 1930s and earned herself the title of the Empress of the Blues. She's often regarded as one of the greatest singers of her era and along with Louis Armstrong, a major influence on other jazz vocalists. So it just gives us like a tiny bit of information. Um, it hooks kids, it gets them thinking, and it gives them a name and a face to focus on and gives them a little bit of information. Um, what's really cool is when you put something like this up, people start seeing connections. Maybe you've talked about jazz, maybe you've talked about blues, maybe you've talked about ragtime. This helps pull a lot of that together. Um, so right next to Bessie Smith, you could have Ella Fitzgerald, where it talks a little bit more about her, especially as an improv singer, um, a celebrated jazz vocalist. Um, this one's really fun, Jelly Roll Morton. The kids always laugh at the name and then they stick around to read it. Um, and it says, I'll just summarize. Um, recognized as a pivotal figure in early jazz, Morton is perhaps most notable as jazz's first arranger, proving that a genre rooted in improvisation could retain its essential spirit and character when written down. And then there's another one, Charlie Parker. I love showing this because the first place I taught in Kansas City, Kansas, um, was where Charlie Parker was born and grew up. So I love talking about Charlie Parker because I feel like this connection was where my first school was, was just down the street from where I was. Anyway, Charlie Parker, ta Charlie, Charlie Parker talks about how he helped develop bebop and how he's um, a saxophone player. Um, but what's really fun is that when these are all together, you can see them sort of together, they have these sort of bright, vibrant colors, um, sort of like deep colors, like deep blue, deep pink, there's some reds, there's yellows, and ambers. And so it, like, it, it's, it sets a tone so that for people sort of to come in and read, um, it gives them all the information they need. Um, and you could put them all out together. Like I said, if you're gonna do it in April, maybe for um, Jazz History Month, you could put them all out together. Another thing you could do um, that I've tried before that works really well, not with this set, but with another set, is you could have like a Musician of the Week. You could take and laminate all, all of these and then every Monday just put out a new one. So Billie Holiday for a week. And then kids as they come through can read about her and then Duke Ellington for a week. You know, they can come through, read all of that. Then John Coltrane for a week. And then Dizzy Gillespie for a week. Whew. But the, the cool thing about doing it that way is that then there's anticipation that there will be a new name up there the next week and the kids will learn something else. It means you're not replacing a whole bulletin board every month or every few weeks or however often you do it. Um, it means that just like once a week you just change out one thing. And one other cool thing you could do if you want to try it that way, you could even do two profiles or whatever. If you take those um, uh, sheet protectors or, or uh, page protectors that like you slip into a three ring binder, those just clear plastic things that, that um, snap into a three ring binder, you can take the poster and just slide it in and slide it out. So those, 
those uh, sheet protectors, I'll staple that to the bulletin board. And then when I'm ready to change out the profiles, you know, maybe I have one in there. Well, then I just slide it out and I slide a new one in, you know, like, so that makes it really easy to transition from one thing to the next. So if you have, if you want to do like a daily musician or a weekly musician or whatever, just laminate the set, print them out, and then staple that, that binder page there so you can just quickly zoop, zoop, zoop. Or another thing I've seen a lot of teachers do is to like hot glue um, a clothespin to the wall. You could use binder clips. You could do something else where you affix that to the wall, and then the posters would just like slide in and clamp down for as long as you want it up there. Next one, slide in, clamp down. You know, next one, slide in, clamp down. So that you can quickly and easily switch those out. So like I said, whether you do all of them at once or whether you do one a week or two a week, um, I like using bulletin boards like this to advocate not just for my specific program, but for music in general. I think anything you can put up on the wall um, to get people excited about music and to get them thinking about the importance of music and its place in history and connections to so many other things, that's important and that's vital and that is good advocacy because getting people excited about music gets people excited about music and it makes them care more about what you do as a music educator um, if they care about um, music in general, if they care about what you're talking about, if they, care, if they make connections to what you're doing in your classroom. Okay, so anyway, this is called Legends of Jazz, um, and I put the link to this on the links page if you're interested in it. Like I said, I have it printed out now because I think sometime between now and April, I'll be able to laminate it and cut it all out. Um, I really do need to replace, um, there's a bulletin board space that I'd like to replace, and this would be a good one that I could leave up for a long time because people would keep coming back to it when you have profiles like this. So, and it's good to get the kids just saying these names, knowing these names, learning these names. So I, I could put it out as soon as I want, but it would be great for April for Jazz Appreciation Month. Okay, one, one, one more thing. If you follow my Facebook page, you know that I freaked out last night. Because in the ad for The Masked Singer, I think, The Masked Singer, um, anyway, it started out with the toad puppets and I was like, like it came on the screen and I immediately was like, oh, that's a folk manis puppet. And I was like, I have that one. So anyway, I walked around school today with this and I was like, anybody else, anybody else? Yeah, I'm famous. I had this before it was cool. So anyway, I just thought it was so funny that there was a, a puppet. I don't even know. I don't know how it connected to the mask singer or, or I don't, it wasn't even the mask singer. It was, um, I don't know, another one of those like vocal shows. I think it was the one with Christina Aguilera. Anyway, unimportant. Obviously, I did not watch the ad closely enough. I just saw the puppet and was like, well, you know, we elementary music teachers have some pretty cool puppets too. So come on down to music and learn more. Anyway, it made me laugh. I just had to bring that in and, and talk about that. Okay, so um, I'm going to start running through my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons, and then I'll do a, a deep dive into um, kindergarten when I'm made through everything. So I'm not going to talk about kindergarten. I'm going to jump into first grade um, because I'll come back and do a deep dive into kindergarten in a second. So first grade and second grade are preparing for programs in March and April. Um, and because I'm on a sort of a weird balance calendar schedule, that means that I don't see th – there's a week – not not next week, but the week after where we don't have school for a week. So we have a like a, win, a mid winter break and then we have a spring break. And so um, it's because we're on a longer extended calendar year. Anyway, all of that to say, I'm going to lose a week in between now and the concerts. So I have to keep thinking ahead of what's going to pull in. So my first grade concert is a concert about a zoo. So a couple of the songs that we're doing this week, um, the kids come in, they we sing, we do um, our little circle song. And then we learn the song, One Elephant Went Out to Play. And if you don't, it goes, one elephant went out to play on a spider web one day. He had such enormous fun. He asked another elephant to come. And it's just a fun game that, you know, we go, we walk around the circle and then he asked another elephant to come. And you take your trunk and you tap a kid and that kid gets to stand up. And then you have two elephants went out to play. And then you go through and then you have three elephants went out to play. This could go on forever. And so when we get to 10 elephants, I change the game because I might have 22 in a class or 24 or whatever. 
And I don't want to keep saying, I've already been staying there a long time. So when I get to 10, all 10 elephants who have already been chosen get to lean down and tap. So it ends the song pretty quickly. So um, I do one by one all the way up to 10. And then once we get to 10, you reach over and you tap and then you're, you're done much, much, much faster. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck there forever. <clears throat> We've been working on uh, Hunt the Cows for the last several weeks. And this is just a day to sort of remember um, what we've done before and just keep it in our heads. So we just sort of redo, last week we added in some, some movement to it. And so we're just running through, just may, maybe taking four or five minutes to do it one more time. But it's so fun because the kids get to sing um, a little bit of an echo. They get to do movement. They think it's silly, but it's actually, it's just a good song for them to do. And that's the one that goes, Wake up, you sleepy heads, and go and hunt the cattle. Wake up, you sleepy heads, and go and hunt the cows. The cows are lost. The sun is warm. I think I'll wait till they come home. And there's an echo on that B section. But I've talked about that in a previous week, so I won't go too much into that. In fact, I think last week I did a first grade recap, so you can check in on that lesson then. Then we do a song, uh, another song from um, a Lynn Kleiner book. Um, jungle Bee. Oh, we're going to the jungle today. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're going to the jungle today. Now, I've shared about that in my previous lesson. In this lesson, um, wh what we've already learned, we learned the song. We learned verse one, which is a poem, a spoken poem with movement. Um, this week, we're learning verse two, which is another um, spoken poem where that just sort of talks about things that you would find in the jungle. Um, and so that one we add on to what we've already learned today. We solidify the things that we're good at. We add in new verses this week. Um, if we have time, we'll do five little speckled frogs, which I realized after the first week of doing it that I was not doing it the way that is most common, that the kids already know, so I changed it um, to the more common version. For some reason, I don't remember where I got the version I've done because I'd never really done it before this year. And so I started singing it with kids and they were like, they just like ran with it because apparently it's in um, one of those like kid YouTube videos, baby bum or I don't know. Anyway, so it, they already sort of know it, but the version I was doing was not the version that they really knew. So I just sort of reverted to that version because it'll, otherwise I'm going to be fighting them this whole process and my version isn't any more right than the version that they learned. So um, I made a little change. But then um, we end the day with Matilda the gorilla, and that's another one I've shared about before. Um, but it goes sort of like this. I had a, or I have a pet gorilla. Her name, it was Matilda. Matilda liked to sing songs every day. And this is what Matilda the gorilla would say. Ooh, 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 ah, ah, ah. Ooh, 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 ah, ah, ah. Ooh, 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 ah, ah, ah. Oh, ooh, ooh, ah, 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 which is hilarious. Uh, so um, anyway, so we, we already learned, they already know this sort of, uh, we sang it a little bit last year in kindergarten. So what we do this time is I introduce all four of the verses. I sing them for students. Um, they sing along on the chorus part. They will eventually learn the verses, but for right now they don't know them. So I'm just introducing it in this lesson. I'm getting them to sort of feel and understand the form so that next week when we come back, they're like, oh yeah, Matilda, we know that one. Oh, we're going to add a verse. Cool. So this is just sort of like getting it prepped ready for them. Um, this is uh, this week is a lot of like, oh, hey, we already did this. Let's add this extra thing. Great. Let's practice it. Great. Next one. Oh, we learned this one already. Hey, let's add a new part. Great, what, you know, it's just like building, 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 building. The second graders are also preparing for a concert. What a Wonderful World is the concert we're gonna do. So this week we do, um, again, it's a lot of like taking what we learned and built. So when they come in, we do our circle. Um, we do, in that quick circle time, five minutes, six minutes, um, and more like 10 if you add in, because I have attendance in there. We do echo clapping on body percussion. We do solfege echoing. Um, just to sort of like, get, you know, get a little snippet of that in every single lesson, solfege in every lesson, body percussion in every lesson, singing in every lesson where they sing sort of a solo because we usually do that for our, um, attendance. Um, usually for attendance, it's hello, David. Hello, Mr. Rao. 
Hello, Karen. Hello, Mr. Rao. They get to sing back, right? We've been doing that for a long, long time. So since this is a concert about moving around the world and going around the world, um, we talk about different ways to say hello. So we um, identify some different ways. Bonjour, ni hao, uh, ciao, hola, guten tag, all these different ones. And, and so for attendance, you know, we roll through. I say, like, who else knows another one? Who else knows another one? So for attendance, then I'll say, hello, Kelly. And Kelly could say, like, ni hao. Um, Guten Tag, Mr. Rao, or whatever. Um, and so for this for this attendance, um, I say their name and they get to say hello in, in whatever language they want, which is so much fun for them. And actually, there are a couple kids who are just like so proud because like a lot of people know like aloha and hola and whatever. And like there's one little girl whose parents are from the Philippines. And so she taught, taught us the way to say it in um, in the language that she learned from her parents. And then there's another kid who comes from Laos and he um, taught us another way to say. So we, we keep learning different ways and it's so much fun. And it's just a little attendance thing. Um, we do a little poem, um, Bate Bate Chocolate. We talked about that. Um, and I talked about that in a previous video and I'm doing Bate Bate two ways. So for the last couple weeks, we've been talking about Bate Bate as if it's hot chocolate. And so um, it, Bate Bate Chocolate, there are a couple different versions you can do. Um, and so the version we did is Bate Bate Chocolate, Bate Bate Chocolate, Bate Bate Chocolate, Bate Bate Chocolate. And then we go uno, dos, tres, cho, uno, dos, tres, co, uno, dos, tres, la, uno, dos, tres, te. So um, we're doing that now and we're I'm talking about it as if it's hot chocolate. Um, next week, I'm going to talk about something else you can find in Mexico that has chocolate in it, which is mole. Um, and then it'll, the poem will change to bate, bate, chocolate, con arroz y con tomate. Bate, bate, chocolate, con arroz y con tomate. Because that's how you make mole, or that's one of the versions. So it'll change next week. So in this week, we were talking about hot chocolate. I found a video online of how they make hot chocolate in Mexico with the traditional molinillo. It's a little um, kitchen, that's not, not a, an appliance, but a little kitchen tool you can use in a stovetop pan with um, heated milk and actual chocolate. So it was cool because we've been talking about it and I showed them a picture of a millennial a week or two ago. And now to see it in action is sort of cool. So it's just a quick YouTube clip. It's like, a minute and a half, but fun because we're talking about this thing and then they get to see it in action. We learned Frere Jaca, which I have never taught before. Like, I don't think I've taught it before. Like, maybe I taught it before a couple years ago. Um, but we learned Frere Jaca and I, I teach the English version first and then I teach um, the French. So we learn the English and we can sort of get the form and get the idea of it. And then I say, oh, but if we're going to say something from France, we should do it in French. And so we switch the words over. It is sort of successful. <laughs> and so I'm excited to see how it becomes more successful as we go on. But um, I think doing the English one first, so they get a grip on the process and the um, icing you sing for the first couple times gets them going and learning it. And then adding the French, we're doing OK. Um, it's, it's also funny because uh, dormez-vous sounds like duerme. So like the, the Spanish speakers are like, wait, hold on. French and Spanish. I'm like, yeah, they're, they're similar. <laughs> um, it's very fun. Then we learn um, this little dance to um, a song called La Raspa. And the version I'm doing comes from this huge, huge book. This is a book by Phyllis Weikert. It's called Teaching Movement and Dance. Um, it is a great book with so many resources that you could just pull ideas and resources forever and ever and ever and ever. Um, but this book, um, I put a link to it. I think I put a link to Amazon, even though it's not available. Amazon Prime It's only available like through third party sellers. I don't know that I would get it on Amazon Prime. In fact, I think I got it from like one of those music teacher buy, sell, trade like groups. Um, or I maybe got it from one of the discount bookseller websites like Better World Books or thriftbooks.com. But I don't remember exactly, but don't get it on Amazon. But I put the link to Amazon so you can like get the ISBN and then go search at other places. Because I think on Amazon it's like $90 and you could probably find it cheaper if you go to like a 
a music teacher buy sell trade page or something like that but it's a really great book phyllis weikert was just um a you know a, a leader in the field and was amazing with teaching movement and dance and so this gives some really simple little actions to la raspa which we will add into our um, around the world program and then we do eyes the by which we've been learning again it's another one of those that we're like every week we learn one more part every week we, we learn one more part and this week we learned um, a little partner movement that we added on to what we've already done and I've shared about Eyes of the Bible before, so I'm not going to go too far into that because I know you could go back and learn more if you wanted later. Third grade, they come in. We do solfege again. Um, we include fa, which is newer to third grade um, to my kids. Um, and then we do uh, we we do some body percussion. We do some back and forth body percussion. Um, third, fourth, and fifth do some similar things. So I'll show you that in just a second. But um, we. Uh, then we do we do our body percussion, we do our attendance, we do all that, and then we learn a song called Sansa Chroma, which is from Ghana, and um, it's a song about um, a bird that swoops in and takes care of um, the chicks that it finds that are orphaned. Um, it's a really fun song. I've done a favorite folk song set because the, when I first taught it, um, I like thought the song was so cool. I saw these cool extension activities you could do with it. Um, I started teaching it and then I was like, I better know for sure like what the background of history of this song is. So I did some research and I was like, I'm going to make a folk song set about it. Great. So I can like have all that, all those resources together in one place. So I was like pulling images of like different things, um, like, you know, different pictures and images of the the chroma, which is a bird. And um, I was doing all of that. And then I realized that the words translated basically to Sansa chroma, which is this hawk or eagle, it, depending on who you ask, flies in and picks up little chicks and takes them back to her nest. And I was like, oh heavens, I'm teaching these kids a song about a bird eating other birds, like eating orphan birds. Um, but then I found, <laughs> I found out, like I kept digging, kept digging. And it was, um, it's sort of a, mor a, a moral story that the, the Akan people in Ghana and Ivory Coast teach their children. Um, they teach their children that, you know, like just as Sansa, the Kroma, swoops in to pick up orphaned chicks, if you are ever orphaned or abandoned or if there's ever a problem or something happens, our village will take care of you. We will, we will swoop in like Sansa and take care of you. And I was like... Oh, that's a good ending of the story. I was afraid it was like, oh no, this bird is swooping in and like eating unattended children. Like that's where I thought the story was going, but that's not where it goes. Anyway, so um, it's a super fun song. And um, now that I have all the resources together in one place in that favorite folk song set, now I have the pictures, I have the backstory, I have the translation, all of that, and links to um, some kids performing. And, and what we do in this lesson is we learn it, we sing it, we do... Um, some body percussion with the song and then we add in um, in the folk song set there's a video or a link to a video of kids doing a passing game and you can do a rock passing game you can do in the video kids just in Africa they grab their flip-flops and do it with that that you you can do whatever you want we end up doing it with egg shakers um, and do a fun little passing game with that and it's a great song and it's funny because I taught it um, I've taught it for the last several years and um, I had a third grade teacher send me a video once from their field trip and the whole bus was singing Sansa Chroma, which is so sweet, except the song's like 15 seconds long. And so this poor third grade teacher heard like a 10 minute loop of like a 15 second long song. And I felt bad because I was like, well, glad they like it, but sorry, you're having to hear the same 15 seconds for 20 minutes. Anyway, but it was cool. Like it, it stuck so much in their head that they kept singing it. Okay, fourth and fifth grade, we're doing more ukulele. Um, I did, a, or I went to a really cool session at GMEA by Dr. Jill Reese, um, who teaches at um, SUNY in Fredonia um, in New York. Um, and she did this great session. There are so many little tidbits and things that I am trying out and testing out in my own classroom. Um, and it's going to those sessions, it's sometimes... I mean, it is the content that the presenter gives you, but sometimes it's like the little things they say or like, oh, I had never thought to hold my hand like that or to to like move that person's elbow like that or whatever. It's the it's the little things that you glean. So um, a couple things that I got from her, um, she said, um, well, she was talking about strumming and she was talking about how, you know, you move 
Um, you can move from the elbow and not just the hand. It's just trying to help kids relax and move. Um, she talked about um, a couple little chord changes and things that she does um, that help kids sort of along the path. What I really love, um, she has so many play along videos um, that are available for free on YouTube. Um, and she has, um, just simplified chords. She's taken a lot of pop songs that have three or four or five chords and she has like tuned them down or tuned them up to where they would work in um, a ukulele range. So instead of it being in like A, she'll tune it up to C or tune it down to G or something so that you can use more simplified chords. Because usually with ukulele, you start with the chords like C, F, G or C, F, G, seven. Um, and so she has all these great resources. So. Um, I'm testing out a lot of the things that she said, and I'll share more about that in another um, in another lesson. But but what I really love is that she has um, just all these great resources online, and I've linked that on the links pages, um, a link to her YouTube page where you can find tons and tons of videos where your kids can play along. The ones that we're doing in fourth and fifth grade, the fourth graders are doing Best Day of My Life, which just involves a C chord and an F chord and an A minor, which they can just ignore because it comes up maybe twice. Um, and then my fifth graders who are like, we're reviewing and remembering what we did last year. Um, we're really hitting C, F and G seven, those three chords. And so the videos we're using are surfing USA, which is quick, but they can do it if they're able to switch between G seven and C and then Johnny be good, which is another one um, that uses C and F primarily and some G seven. So those play alongs that she has are so much fun for the kids and a challenge. And that's great. So what I sometimes do is we'll play it, we'll try it, and maybe we'll do just part of it or, or sometimes all of it, and then we'll stop, we'll work on those skills, the switching between chords, we'll talk about what makes it easier to switch from one to another, or we'll fix some technique things. Um, sometimes that means me floating around through the whole group. Sometimes that means kids and partners checking each other. Sometimes it means small groups, but um, we will play the thing, we'll work on some things, and then maybe we'll play it again. So they get like a second chance at it. And kids like that, not just because they like to repeat videos ad nauseum, but because they can figure out what they need to fix and they get another shot at it. And so they like that. So a lot of times I'll go back and do more of that. Okay, one thing with before I jump into first grade with third, fourth and fifth grade, um, when they come in, um, a lot of times when they come in as they're walking in, so they're like activated as they're moving in and not just like walking in and sitting down from the door with my little classroom microphone on, I'll say, turn my words into claps and I'll speak right into the microphone. So even though there's hallway noise or whatever, they'll hear it. And I'll say like, ta, 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 di, ta. So they're their job is to take the words I'm giving them and turn them into claps. So I'll give them three or four patterns, ta di ta, ta di ta. Right, and they, their job is to translate that into whatever. And then I'll say, turn my words into pats. Okay, and then, um, and they get a little choice there. So if you're patting, you can either two hands together, bum, 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 bum. You can do alternating, bum, 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 bum. I always point that out because there are always two or three kids who don't see that and don't realize that until what I say it. So then I'll say, turn my words into snaps. Or um, with some of the grades, I'll say, now you get to choose. You can either turn my words into pats or claps. So if I said, if I said ta di ta, ta di ta, you could do or, 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 and, and they're like, yeah, we get, we get it. We could do. <laughs> and so it's just fun because then they get just a little bit of a choice and then they get a, I, I get to see if they can actually do it. Oh, and for a lot of them, they're like, Psh, breeze. Okay. Turn my words into either pats, claps or snaps. And they, they do that. And that's fun to do. And especially if you start amping up the rhythm. So if you get into 16th notes, then you can have a conversation with kids about whether this is actually doable because <laughs> they will try and clap 16th notes and it doesn't work. Um, or they'll try and snap 16th notes and that doesn't work either. So we talk about why padding it is like the, maybe the easy, the easiest way. And some kids will fight you. they like, no, I like clapping Takadimi. I'm like, okay, well you go right ahead. But for most people, it's probably easier to, you know, so we can have that conversation and that's great to have that conversation because it talks about why you're making that choice. And you can go through and say like, why would I do this other one instead? Is it easier? Does it make more sense? You know, like 
it's a good because it, then later if you're taught if you do improvisation or if you do composition or whatever or even just performance why are you doing it that way what's another way we could do it is there an easier way to do it you know you could if you have those conversations now about the things that are just you know you're doing normally in class then the, when those conversations come up again later the kids are already used to that back and forth and they you know they they get it so that's one of the things we do and then for fun I'll say turn my claps into pats and I'll clap a pattern and they have to pat it right and so but so that's easy so oh it's too easy you just flip it so then I'll pat and they'll clap and that's when I am mean and I'll do and they clap and they are lulled into a sense of security and then I do 16 notes And I go, I don't know about that. Try again. Mm, let's try another one. And they're like, and they can't really do it. And so um, it's just fun to see that happen. So those are just a few of the body percussion things that we're doing right now. But it, this is great for them because it makes them think about why they want to choose different levels, um, either clapping or patting or snapping. Um, this is like high time critical thinking because they're transferring either spoken words into body movement or they're changing one kind of movement into another kind of movement. That's transfer of knowledge, and that's it's it's right on their level of what they should be doing with critical thinking, and it is so good for them. And in these little snippets, they just feel like it's a game, but actually it is building on skills that I really want them to use later. So with my ukulele kids, later I'll say, turn my words into strums. Ta, 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 di, ta, dum, bum, 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 bum. And so you can use that technique later, um, and, and it's just fun to build on now. So if you start it now at the beginning of class, they're engaged, they're thinking, and then you can use those skills later. Okay, that's everything one through five. Let me do my jump into kinder and then take you sort of through the whole, through the whole process. So kindergarten, um, I, I'm sort of blessed and um well blessed i'll just say i'm blessed that um in at my school i am not in charge of the kindergarten performance the kindergarten team they have a theme every year they do their own thing um and i just sort of help out by setting up the sound system and they they sort of do some musical things but the kids aren't singing it's just sort of a um a drama and uh, movement sort of a thing so the nice thing is that doesn't cut into my class time so all throughout the spring, I'm like, oh, thank God, because there's so much that we do in kindergarten, so much exploration, so much singing, and this this lesson we're getting into some instruments and books and so much more so that like not having to try and cram in a performance is so nice. Um, and I, I, I'm always a little bit stressed that like, mm, but like I wanna like, we, I wanna sing in the performance, but you know, it's sort of like, you know what? Okay, it's hands off. It means I get more classroom time. It's totally fine. So um, I just sort of, you know, relax and don't worry about it. But um, I love that because their their performance is coming up. It's um, a week from Thursday, and I'm not stressed. My classroom time is great. We're exploring. It's so much fun. So that's one of the reasons I just like love this lesson because I know <laughs> I know what it, um, they're going to be coming up to. Okay, so they come in, we do our circle, um, we, I make sure that when we do our back and forth body percussion that I add in snaps because that's tricky for a lot of kids. And uh, for kinder, it's sort of like, if you can do it, great. If you can't do it, I am not going to spend a lot of time pushing you to work on snaps because it's just something that, you know, like their, their, their body just can't, for some of them, just can't do it. And it's a coordination thing that they just are not able to do. So I don't stress about it. I'm just like, hey, let's try some snaps. And you know, I'll, I'll you know, not that fast. You try and they get a clap back, you know, snap back. So we, they're used to body percussion back and forth. Um, and so adding in snaps is a little tricky, but it's, it's right on where they should be and what they should try out. Um, we add in solfege, we're singing so me patterns. Um, we add in the poem Ba Ba Black Sheep. That is sort of replacing copycat copycat, which we've done all fall. Um, and so in this lesson, I make sure that we put an emphasis on how we're saying it. 
So when I first start, you know, you read ba ba black sheep, have you any wool? So I get the poem started and they know it, so they they'll say it. So I sort of step out and don't speak. I like it. Ba ba black sheep, have you and I let them do it on their own, right? So I'm listening and I go, wow, that was great. But you know what? There are some kids who are doing this. Just listen, just listen. Ba, ba, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. Ugh, that is not, I, I don't know if I would wanna to listen to that all day. Does that voice sound sort of, is it exciting? Do you wanna to listen to that? And they're like, mm, no. Okay, how about this? Ba, ba, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full. I'm like, mm, no. Right. Well, hmm. Listen to how I do it now. Ba, ba, black sheep. Have you any wool? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full. One for the master. One for the dame. One for the little boy who lives down the lane. Do you think that you can make your voice and your face just sparkle a little bit more and make it just a little bit more exciting? So we're talking about like how you say the words. Don't just say them. Don't just ramble through, but like really go for it. Make them emotive and exciting. I can't say the word emotive because the kids don't know that. But if I say like make your voice and face sparkle, they'll do a little bit more. Usually the first time that means I'll just say it louder. Ba ba black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir. Yeah. So then I'm like, oh, good. so that I, I parrot that back at them. And then I say one more like, listen again. And we try. And then it's, it's so funny because I had a whole class go like, ba ba black sheep, have you any wool? And they like, it's just hilarious that they, they get more animated, excited about that. So we go through that. We talk about like, how are you saying the poem? How are you doing that? Um, and pretty soon Baba will be gone and we'll replace it with another nursery rhyme because I'm trying to cycle a lot of those in so we get more exposure with that. Um, it's also fun to give them more vocabulary through that, but um, this is probably maybe one of the last times we'll do it. We might sing it once or twice, but um, just because it's so well known, it's one that we're sort of throwing in there first. Okay, and then we go over and we we meet my friend Ollie. And Ollie, the octopus, they've met before. So we start with, what do you remember about an octopus? And they'll tell me, you know, last time when we met the octopus, they learned, um, or someone stated or whatever, you know, that an octopus can squirt ink. Yep, and an octopus has eight tentacles. Yep, and we count them. And then an octopus has an eye on each side of its head. Mm-hmm, yep, one there, one there. So instead of looking straight forward like we would, it looks out to the side. It'd be like if we had an eye on this side of our head and one on this side of our head. So we, we just sort of go through some of the facts and things that we know about an octopus. I do that for a couple of reasons. One, I want them, I want to enhance their schema. I want their background knowledge of what we're talking about to be full. I want them to know more about these animals. Number two, if I didn't do this, probably some could be like, Ms. Rod, did you know that an octopus squirts ink? Yeah, yeah, great. But we're, I mean, we're giving backstory and context to this puppet. We're giving kids, get all this imagery about where we're setting our scene for the next thing that we're gonna learn. And also we're getting out some of those like excited things that they wanna tell me anyway. Did you know that an octopus has eight legs? eight tentacles and it has suction cups underneath. I'm like, yeah. Anyway, so those are all things that we sort of just do really quickly for a minute or two before we do the, the song. Well, Ollie, we learned last time, is not a real animal. And I said, I, you know, it was when we started talking about Ollie's mouth and Ollie goes, yes, my mouth is right here, look. And I go, see, it's right here. And they like, look at me for a second, I'm like, well, it, it would be right here if Ollie was a real puppet or was a real animal, but he's not, he's a puppet. He doesn't know that, but, but he's not real. He's actually a puppet. And some of the kids are like, did you just break the fourth wall? Like, they're like, wait, are we addressing this? And some kids are like, I knew, I knew. Anyway, so the... Talking about Ollie like that is fun because then it's like you you let the kids in on the game a little bit. Um, and anyway, so Ollie, if he had a mouth, it'd be right here. And that's another one thing about talking about an octopus. Its mouth is in a different place and its eyes are a different place. It's just a different creature, right? So anyway, um, I make sure that we rehash that like, Ollie is not real. Okay, so then Ollie sings a little song and it goes, Fish, fish, little fish, I am going to catch you. Fish, fish. Little fish, get into my mouth. Ow. And remember, if he if he was get into my mouth, he would pull something with his tentacles up beneath him because his mouth is beneath him, right? 
Anyway, it's a good thing there are no little fish around because if there were any little fish, uh-oh. Hello! And so there's my little fish puppet. And Ollie goes, hello. I still can't figure out a voice for Ollie, so it changes every class. I try and stay consistent within the class, but I'm, I'm working on it. Anyway, so uh, Ollie sings this little song of the fish. Fish, fish, little fish, I am going to catch you. Fish, fish, little fish, get into my mouth. What? And so like the fish is like, oh no, the fish is gone. And the kids are like, Wah! and then I show them, but wait, is the fish really gone? Look, Ollie doesn't have a mouth, so don't worry about this fish. That fish is safe, right? Because because Ollie's not really, he's not really an octopus. Anyway, hello. Oh no, a different fish. Oh my. Oh, I am still hungry. For some reason, I don't feel full at all after that last fish. So this is great. There's another fish around, and the kids are like, because he's a puppet. Anyway, so we sing the song. Fish, fish, little fish. I am going to catch you. What? Like, like tag? Not like tag. Fish, fish, little fish, get into my mouth. <coughs> oh no, the fish is gone. But is the fish really gone? Cause see, wait, hold on. Did, did I drop it? Hold on, oh, wait, just. Wait, did Ollie really eat that fish? Yes, I told you I was going to eat that fish. But wait, that you're not a real... Not a real what? Nothing. Hmm. So then the kids are like, some of them are like, wait, he ate it. It's in, it's under your hand. I'm like, no, it's, it's not. Look here. See, like, it's not. I don't have it in my hand. I don't know where it is. And they're like, well, it's in the puppet. I'm like, but no, it's not. There's like a, there's like a tag. But there's no fish in there. Where did it go? So anyway, this is my like sleight of hand moment that like makes them like really question, is it really a puppet? They're not sure. So <laughs> what I do? So here when I do it this time, so the first time when he eats the fish, I hold it in the tentacles, right? This time when he eats the fish, I make sure that I slide it underneath into the puppet itself. And so then when I open up, they can't tell if it's there or not. And when I take my hand out to say like, no, it's not there. Then when I put my hand back in, I put the, the fish on top of my hand so that it is not in between my hand and so it's not in the palm of my hand. So then I can say, but no, look, it's not in there. You can't see it and they can't really tell that there's, they don't know where the fish has gone. And it is like this hilarious moment of like, I've taken the time to make them aware that this is not a real animal, it's a puppet. And then it eats a fish. So like they don't know what to do about it. Anyway, so it's hilarious. And um, Ollie's like, I'm still hungry. So we get up, um, we actually have more fish. And what we do is that each kid is sitting crisscross applesauce. And if they're sitting crisscross applesauce, that makes sort of a bowl in their lap. And I have enough fish to drop a fish in each kid's bowl. And then they can do the song with us. Oh, and then that is hilarious to see the kids be, you know, like they've got a fish on one hand and their other hand gets to be the octopus and they get to eat it. And then they're like, oh no, but the fish is gone. My, my octopus must have really eaten it. And it's anyway, it's hilarious and they get to sing along and they think it's so much fun. Um, and I have four different colors of fish. I've got orange with black stripes, green with blue stripes, blue with pink stripes and pink with black stripes. And we just have so much fun with that. These you can get, I think I got them at US Toy. I can't remember exactly. I know there's a link on Amazon, but I don't know if that um, seller is the place you would wanna get it. But it's on Amazon in case you wanna see the listing of exactly which ones I have. They're made of plastic, so they're really durable and you can just throw them in the, um, the sink and wash them out if you're afraid this, you know, some kid has like coughed their mucus into them or whatever. But anyway, they're, they're really fun. Um, they're just sort of the right size for kids. And I say, if the fish is sort of, flipping around or whatever, you can either try and fit two fingers there or just put them on your thumb and then that'll be great. But anyway, we get to sing and each kid has their one hand gets to pretend to be an octopus and the other hand um, gets to hold the fish. We do that two or three times and we have so much fun before we move on to our next song. So our next song um, is actually based on a book and it's based on the book Mortimer, which I know probably many of you have read. So a couple things that I do with Mortimer, because I know that this is probably not like a life-changing story me talking about this. Many folks that were introduced to Mortimer and instrument um, exploration with the book Mallet Madness by Artie Almeida. Artie is great. Um, her lesson here is amazing. Um, I, oh, I don't have a bookmark. Hold on. Um, 
And she uses this story. Where did it go? Mortimer. There we go. Um, she uses this story and she has a little song in here. The song that I do is just a little bit different, but what I really love is in her book, she has, um, you know, get the book, read the book, um, and then you can talk about some thing, parts in the book and then the kids get it uh, added in. So she has some ideas for exploration and things. I want to show you a couple things that are different maybe than the arty version. Um, so I'll just read part of the story to you. Um, this is by Robert Munch. The art is by Michael Marchenko. And if you're like, oh, I want to get this book, it's $6.99 on Amazon. It is not expensive. It's $8.99 hardcover. So break the bank. But anyway, it's a good book. So one night, Mortimer's mother... T oh, and I don't say the words exactly as they are written. I change them a little bit. One night, Mortimer's mother took him upstairs to bed. Bum, 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 bum. Once they got upstairs, Mortimer's mother opened the door to his room. And then the book says, she threw him into bed and said... I'm like, I don't say that. She put him into bed and said, Mortimer, be quiet. And then it says, Mortimer shook his head. Yes. But whenever I say shook his head, kids go like this. So I say, Mortimer nodded his head. Yes, I will be. Then Mortimer's mother went down the stairs. Thump, 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 thump. As soon as she got back downstairs, Mortimer sang. And this is, I do a different version than Artie. The version I go to is clang, clang, rattle, bing, bang, gonna make my noise all day. Clang, clang, rattle, bing, bang, gonna make my noise all day. So it's a super fun song. And the rest of the book is a repeat of that exact same thing. Um, father comes up to try and get Mortimer to be quiet, goes up the stairs, thump, 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 down the stairs, thump, 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 thump. Mortimer, be quiet. And then clang, 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 rattle, bing, bang, gonna make my noise all day. Clang, clang, rattle, bing, bang, gonna make my noise all day. When we get to this page, I stop and I say, hmm, do you see all these little, what are those? And some kids are like, those are music notes. I'm like, yeah. Oh, and a second ago, Mortimer, if you look at him when he's singing, there are notes, they're coming out of his mouth. Coming out of his mouth. Hold on, I'm gonna sing the song and raise your hand if you see notes coming out of my mouth. Clang, clang, rattle, bang, bang, gonna make my noise all day. Hey, can you see them? Are they coming out? No, okay, clang, clang, rattle, bang, bang. And so I do that with kids and they're like, those don't come out. And I was like, oh, well then that must be the illustrator, Michael Marchenko. That must be what he did to show you singing is happening, even though it's not really happening, right? I mean, you can't really see sound. So it's just, he's showing you. So in this page, when there are lots and lots and lots of notes, that must mean he must be singing like really loud or like a lot, right? And so I just identify that for kids because I want them to be more observant of that. I don't want this to be background, just, you know, fuzz in there. I want them to see that this is an important part of the story. Um, and also I point out that the author has done thump, 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 thump. I always do an octave. Um, has done the words in this order so that it looks like going down the stairs. I point that out to kids as an important part. So then uh, mother comes up, father comes up, they both try. Brothers and sisters, 17 of them come up the stairs and yell, Mortimer, be quiet! Right, and then I show like, hold on, they don't have notes coming out of their mouth. What do they have coming out of their mouth? And the kid's are like, stars! We identified a shape. I'm like, yeah, why stars? Like, if, if the music notes was because they were singing, what do you think the stars are for? And that that takes them a while. But, but if we've already identified, since we took the time to talk about the music notes coming out of his mouth signifies that they're singing, then they have to think about what just, what did they just hear in the story? Mortimer, be quiet! and how people are feeling and why are there stars? So the kids are like, some one brave kid is like, it's because they're they're frustrated with him. They're, they have angry faces. And I'm like, yes, that could be, couldn't it? But it's definitely not music coming out of their mouth, is it? And they're like, no. Anyway, I just think that's so much fun because then Mortimer keeps singing, right? And um, they call the police, the police come up and um, try and get Mortimer to be quiet. And then it doesn't work. And at the end of the story, then people, everyone downstairs is arguing, why didn't you get him to be quiet? Well, I couldn't get him to be quiet. That's why I called you. Well, I can't get him to be quiet. You know, so it's, you can see that they're arguing, whatever. And I say, look, do you see music notes anymore? 
and the kids are like, only stars. I'm like, why is that? Because they're arguing. Yep. But while everyone was downstairs, Mortimer waited so long for someone to come and check on him that he fell asleep. It's a cute little story. The, the obvious implications for um, instrument exploration are right there. Um, and, and just sound exploration if you want. But because we have instruments, why not explore? So in this lesson, I pull out my step bells. And maybe you have a set of these in your room already. Um, but the step bells are great because then the second time we do the song, anytime anyone goes up the stairs, right, you can actually go up the stairs or down the stairs. When the 17 brothers and sisters go up the stairs, and I, I ask kids, why, why do you think I played it like that? You know, they're like, well, because it's many people. I'm like, yeah, it's many people. And when the policemen go up the stairs, slowly. And these step bells are just perfect for that, right? Um, we also talk about if Jack and Jill were going up these stairs, they'd be just fine going up, but when they're coming down, they'd probably fall down the stairs, right? And because we've done an instrument exploration lesson with Jack and Jill, this ties right in. So the second time through, I do the, I add the step bells for the stepping part. The kids sing the song, clang, clang, rattle, bing, bang, gonna make my noise all day. Clang, clang, rattle, bing, bang, gonna make my noise all day. I take 30 seconds and talk to them about, there are two parts to the song, they're not the same. Tell me what's different. And some kids will say like, ooh, the end doesn't have day. Yeah, and it's hard for them to put that into words at first, but it's cool to see when they do that. So we, the kids sing that part of the song, the kids get to yell Mortimer, be quiet. We add in the step bells in this day. Next time the kids come, the instruments will be out and we will reenact the story where each kid has an instrument they're gonna share. So on each side of the instrument, one kid on this, on this side, one kid on this side, each one will get one mallet and we'll get to do Mortimer going up the stairs and they'll get to perform it at xylophones and glockenspiels and all sorts of things. One of the things that, that I use to help with this, um, instead of just having the instrument flat, I have these, um, I bought them at Target um, on sale at the end of summer clearance. Um, and this was like camping gear, but it was really cheap. They had like six bowls for a dollar fifty or something. So they're fun colors. I use them for all sorts of things. If we have crayons, I put crayons in there. If we need like a little marker on the floor, I might use this. But in this lesson, I take them, I flip them upside down, and I prop up one side of the instrument so that it is like absolutely clear where the top of the standing on the instruments, we can do Mortimer again in that next lesson. We could do Jack and Jill since we're right there and they already know the poem at that lesson. We could do any sort of ex exploration they want. And if you have one kid on each side, each kid gets a mallet, then that means you know, if you only have enough instruments for half the class, well, fine, because, you know, the kids are going to be sharing. But even if you don't have enough instruments, you could rotate kids through. You might want to rotate them anyway so that they have experience at a glockenspiel and a xylophone and a metallophone or whatever. Um, but the, the instrument part is like, it's perfect for this song. Um, you could follow Artie Almeida's plans and Mallet Madness. You could just take it and run with it like I did. Or like I said, this is, I just have taken the book and just changed just a couple things. Um, and because we started our lesson with talking about Baba ba, Black Sheep and like, how can you say the words in an exciting way? Then the way that they say Mortimer or the way that they do this, that it's sort of influenced by that of like, yes, that's great. And how can you make that more, more exciting or more emphatic or more relevant? So um, Mortimer is a great book, totally worth it. Like I said, it's only like $6.99 for the, for the paperback version. Okay, well, that's all for tonight. Quick recap, I did all my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons. I did a deep dive into kindergarten. Um, I showed you my Legends of Jazz bulletin board set if you want to go back if you missed that part so you can see more about how I use that for advocacy and how I use that sort of different ways you can set that up. Any of the things you saw tonight, if you want links for those, they're on the links page. And if you're going to be at South Carolina Music Educators, I'm doing two sessions this Saturday. I hope we'll see you there. Don't eat a very heavy lunch because the first thing we're doing right after lunch on Saturday is dancing and moving. So fair warning. Um, and also um, there's a Teachers Pay Teacher sale starting tonight at midnight or maybe tomorrow. I need to check. But if you go on my page on Facebook, um, you can enter to win a $10 gift card um, and then enter on a bunch of other music teacher pages for more gift cards um, so that you can get a little extra cash when you go if you go shopping. Anyway, um, thanks so much for joining me this week. I hope you have a great week with your kids and I'll see you next week. Or if you're in South Carolina, I'll see you on Saturday. 
Thanks, everyone. Have a good night.